All right. Next, I would like to welcome Rodney Trusty to the stage. Rodney is a hobbyist turned professional with an extreme passion for all things embedded. His latest efforts have been to lower the barrier to entry for complex manufacturable textile circuits. You ready, Rodney? Everybody, so I'm going to talk to you today about how to make um, electronic textiles, specifically using technical embroidery to create washable e-textiles. Oops, sorry, I went to the wrong. So if we look here, uh, we have an example of an e-textile that has about 500 or 600 addressable LEDs. These are all done on an embroidery machine. Um, if I can get to the speaker notes, I can show you a video. I'm not sure how to do that, so I'll skip that for now. Um, so the working principle behind it is that you have an LED sequin, and it gets stitched into fabric using an embroidery machine. So you see this photo. Um, it's supposed to be a video, but it's not playing. The, you use conductive, fabric, uh, conductive fibers to stitch directly into uh, an LED sequin, and there are four signals. You have power, ground, signal in, and signal out. And there's four connections per LED, so in that demonstration, there's 2,336 total connections. If either one of them uh, disconnects for even a few microseconds, it'll corrupt your whole entire data stream. So what's the challenge here if the machine's doing all the work and you're just placing LEDs, as you see in this picture? Uh, the challenge is that achieving a reliable contact between the PCB and the conductive material is very difficult. As the material flexes, or especially if it gets washed, uh, the momentary disconnects become more frequent. If you look at the photo here, we have the basic anatomy of a typical embroidered circuit. You have your track, which is going to carry your main five voltage. Um, that's usually heavily reinforced. Your frontal is less reinforced than using uh, lower cost materials. That's to bring your voltage from your main track to the component. And your closure is the most sensitive part of this. That's where you actually tie down your component. And that's what we're going to focus on. So the solution is design rules. There's many design rules that make it possible, but I'll cover the most, uh, most important three. The first one, of course, is PCB geometry. If there's one thing you need to take away from this, it's PCB geometry. Uh, take a look here at, uh, on the right there, you see the typical format of an embroiderable LED, and it has a round edge. The difficult part of that is that the external edge is not conductive at all. Also, because it's round, it allows a lot of flex when you go to sew in and out of that hole. On the left, you see a concave edge or castellated edge. Uh, weaving in and out of that middle hole, that center hole, and the castellated edge provides much more secure connection and gives you 360 degrees of contact surface. On the bottom, you can see this is just a generic uh, development board design uh, for controlling LEDs and touch input and Bluetooth and all that good stuff. The second thing you want to do is you want to have a conductive pad underneath of your component. So I'm placing LEDs by hand, but as you can see, I've already run conductive material to, to place underneath. So now we have contact underneath the PCB, on top, on the inside, and the exterior, full closure. And the last thing you want to take into, to, well, not the last, the third, um, is your needle path. You want to make multiple passes, so when I embroider from one component to the next, I'm going back and forth several times, and I don't stitch in the same place twice. So if you stitch in the same hole twice, the abrasion from the needle and the, and the thread reduces the resistance and can also break your thread. So in conclusion, you want to use castellated holes, a conductive underpad, multiple pass traces. You get 360 degrees top and bottom, and you increase your trace durability. Now this was supposed to be a video that shows you a software I developed that takes all of these design processes into uh, account and auto-generates the circuits, but the video here isn't working, so just use your imagination there. <laughs> Thank you guys.